So you want to join the dark side. What's up Game Weepers, the Jizz here, and if you guys aren't aware, I am actually a multi-challenger Shaco player from the Oceanic Super Server, and I have decided to put all my wisdom, all my knowledge, all my toxicity into this ultimate Shaco guide just for you. I'm going to be showing you the best and most unique jungle clears, the cleanest and most five head mechanics, teaching you how to think like a Shaco god, how to make your opponents look more lost than double lift in that Pro Guards ad you just watched, everything is in here. Now before we get started, I have a question and a request. The question, are you toxic? Now if you answered yes, then you have quite qualified to watch this guide. And the request, just check out the Game Week website, which has the champion courses, high elo analyses, how to master your role videos, which you cannot live without if you want to climb, that is. So if you want to stay hard stuck, no worries. But if you want to escape elo hell this season, join thousands of your fellow summoners who also blame the game and not themselves. Links as always in the description and comment section. All right, so let's march, march, march. All right, so the first chapter of this guide, guys, we're going to be talking about Shaco's abilities and how to use these. So a bit of mechanics in here as well. So your passive, this is called backstab. And backstab, literally, if you backstab an enemy, so an enemy minion, an enemy monster, an enemy champion, you're going to do more physical damage to that enemy. So that's pretty easy to understand. But what's a little more interesting is that your backstab also applies to your Q, your Deceive, and your E, your two shift poison. So if you auto attack someone, guys, coming out of your Q from behind, your auto attack will actually critically strike that target for a certain amount of damage. And if you E an enemy from behind, this deals more magic damage, which actually increases the lower HP that target is. So it's a bit like an execute. So it's kind of important to keep in mind. Now, your Q, this is called your Deceive. So when you press Q, guys, you're going to blink Shaco into that target direction wherever your cursor is. Now, this, of course, is great for ganking, getting around the map if you have mana, of course. You don't want to be using it if you're on 100 mana. Getting into advantageous positions before a team fight starts around barons and dragons, key objectives. It's also great to try and nuke those enemy carries that are farming side lanes. And it can also be used to juke your opponents, of course. So if you're running in one direction, you Q back in the other. It's like an Allen Iverson crossover. You're going to break their ankles. Now, in terms of actual Q spots, like where do you actually gank from them? Because you just said that your Q can be used to gank effectively. Well, I'm now going to show you some guys. And the most important thing about all of these spots, by the way, is your position as you Q. So where Shaco is in relation to that terrain and then where your mouse cursor is as you press Q. OK, that's the most important thing. And that's also consistent with your ultimate as well. If you're too far away from a bit of terrain, a wall, a turret, whatever it is, you are going to headbutt it. So you have to get up close and personal. And a quick little tip as well. I'm sure you've seen Pink Ward and Montages do this where you Q and you base while you're invis and you used to be able to do this with baron buff you could just q and recall while invisible this no longer works so don't try to juke anyone you're only going to be juking yourselves and tilting your teammates and it's also important to point out here guys so when you q so when you're actually in stealth control wards do not see you red trinkets red sweepers are the only thing that can really cuck you here because when an enemy champion is popping that red sweeper if you're in that vicinity around them they can actually see your outline and i also want to point out this here as well if you're taking some sort of damage so if you're taking burn damage let's say from a red buff a red smite ignite when you Q, the enemy champions are going to see you when you Q. So after you Q, they'll actually be able to see where you've queued to. This is also important to remember. So if you're skirmishing an enemy champion and they have red buff, remember that when you Q and they have that burn on you, they are going to see your outline. So be very careful doing this in fights. Now your W, guys, is your jack in the box. And this is my favorite ability in the whole game. And if you can use this well in team fights, it can be the big game changer. Even though sometimes it can be really useless because control wars and red sweepers deactivate them. But still, here we go. The purpose of your W, guys, is to clear camps. And thanks to right buffing its damage to monsters now, it makes it even easier. Your box is also really great when you gank, but it's important to place them correctly here. So a couple of general rules of thumb here, guys. If you're ganking an enemy champion who's in a massive minion wave, most of the time they're going to stay in that minion wave to fight you, right? Well, you'd want to be placing your box down probably in the minion wave or on top of that enemy champion. But if the enemy champion looks as if they want to run away, they just want to get to their tower, then it's your job to put that box in that safety route where they're going to run. But really, the most important thing when you're ganking guys is your Q, your Q position. But let me just say this as well guys, yes your Q is an amazing ganking tool, but way too many Shaco players use their Q when they don't have to. Sometimes the best actual way of ganking is just by walking into that lane and saving your Q, because without your Q guys you don't have any other gap closer, right? Yes okay your E slows them, but still, you don't have a dash, you don't have a blink, you don't have a flash of course, so it's essential to use it wisely as I said. So if you're ganking a lane that's really pushed up, just walk into it. No reason to Q behind that enemy champion. Your box can also be used guys to block skill shots so if you're against a Lee Sin and a Lee and Nidalee you can block those skill shots that spear that cocoon that resonating strike or whatever it's called Lee Sin's first Q you can block these abilities so when you're fighting an enemy champion in the jungle or if they're at range and you think they're going to throw something at you you can place your box down it's going to block that very nice indeed now if you are fighting around scuttle crabs guys and just generally in the game it's important to know that smite can actually just one shot your box so if you're fighting the enemy jungler in the early game let's say around scuttle crab they can smite your box and it's gone and 
This is actually a really important cooldown. The most important cooldown, in fact, when you're skirmishing enemy champions. You need your box guys most of the time to actually be able to win those fights. If they smite it, it's very hard to win a one-on-one. -on -one. And I also want to point out here, guys, that your W can be used on blast cones. So if you put your box on a blast cone and hit that blast cone, it will actually travel with that blast, which is pretty cool. So you can use it to get to blue buff, to get to red buff, all of that stuff. Root Herald, Baron, very, very useful to know. Now, moving on to your E, guys, your two shift poison. This is like the big damage dealer in your kit. This is the execute that we talked about. So the lower the enemy champion is, the more damage your E is going to do. It also acts as a gap closer because it slows as well. So if an enemy champion is escaping and they're low HP, so you can just E them and then run after them. You can Q to get closer to them and then E, which is very, very sad. And then this is something you have to get down, Pat. Just a simple Q and E combo. And you can see here how I use it against the center, the executor. But I also want to say this, guys. When you're ganking enemy champions in the early game, do not just throw out your E at the start of the fight. Most of the time, your E is going to be better off being used when the enemy champion is lower, right? Because you're going to do more damage with your two shifts. So let's say the enemy champion is escaping from your gank, right? And you need to slow them so your ally champion can catch up. You would use your E at the start of that gank. But most of the time, guys, when you gank an enemy champion, saving your E is so much better and more impactful because you can then combo that with Ignite and the damage is going to be insane. And I would also recommend, guys, having target champions only on when you are Eing. And you can see here in this clip that I just showed you, when I queue over this inhib, I have my target champions only on. So I'm only going to be hitting center when I throw out my E. This just makes it way more consistent because I'm sure if you have played Shaker, there are going to be times where you're actually Eing the minion instead of the enemy champion. Now for your ultimate, guys, you'll hallucinate. And this is the real identity of Shaco, your clone, okay? So when you press R, you're going to disappear, and then you're going to reappear, spawning a clone next to you. But get this, wherever you aim your cursor, guys, that is where you are going to reappear, and your clone will spawn in the opposite direction to that cursor. This is extremely important to understand. And you can see here, right, if I aim my cursor to the right of me, I reappear towards my cursor. If I hover my cursor to the left, I spawn to the left. This is extremely important. Now, your R, guys, does have a tether range, and when you're close to that range, you will see this indicator. Now, if you step outside that tether range, of course, to your clone, it snaps back to you. Now, this is great if you want to start a fight. So as you queue over a wall or just towards the enemy team, the time you're on top of that enemy champion, guys, your clone will be so close to max range and it will snap back and then boom, Shaco's getting nerfed. Now, it's very important to know, right, that if you are while in your queue, you will stay invisible, but your clone does show, which is also great for starting team fights again, right? Now, what else can your ultimate be used for? Well, it can be used to one-shot enemy champions, right? So the one-shot R combo. So you're ulting when you're close to the enemy squishy to blow them up. And this is most relevant for AD, guys, because your clone, when it attacks, will proc Halo Blade, Kraken Slayer, Sheen, Dust Blade. So all of these on-hit effects, your new potential as a result is 10 times higher. Now, you can also use your ultimate to dodge skill shots, right? To juke the enemy. So you position your clone again where you would normally appear and you move him about as if it was actually you. Now, this again is essential. This separates the men from the boys here. This will juke like even the best of players, but it's essential for you guys to get used to moving your clone about with your R key, trying to make him look as real as possible. Otherwise, no one is going to fall for the joke, right? Now, your ultimate is really great for turret diving as well, because when you're close to that turret and you're about to dive him, just send you in your clone. And when it explodes, bang. Damage in there, the fear as well, going to be very useful. Now, in terms of R spots, guys, so you can ult over walls and a bit of terrain. So where are these? Well, if the wall is really thin, like this one here next to mid, this is kind of just obvious, right? And you can just understand it by looking at it. But some are a bit more nuanced. So around Dragon Pit, you need to be aiming exactly where my cursor is right here. Now, other spots around Dragon and around the map will work, but the key, guys, to all of these spots, if it's a little close to being, like, you know, just out of range, you have to get your knees, so Shaco's knees, into the wall if you can. It sounds so stupid, but trust me, if you practice this in a practice tool, you'll get where I'm coming from. Even if you're just a millimeter away from some of these walls, it will not work, okay? So get as close as you can, get your head into the wall, and it will work. But again, guys, I think the most important tip, especially if you're new to Shaco, is to just get in a practice tool, alt, and practice moving your clone. Try to make it look as if it was you, okay? Now, guys, what I'm about to show you is probably what you're all here for, to be honest, is the early clears on Shaco, and these are the most unique in the game. They're the sickest, they're the best, whatever. So here we go. And just before we start these clears, guys, the major point here is to place your first box, okay, when you're clearing the camp at 50 seconds, but not 49, not before 50 seconds, okay? So 50 seconds, first box. Now, the first clear I want to show you is the Raptors and Red Clear. So what we're doing is clearing 
doing Raptors and Red at the same time. That's right. We're doing two camps instead of just one. Now, your box placements here, guys, are essential. So you have to watch this and memorize these as well. And this will work, guys, if you're going AD Shaco, AP Shaco, if you're going with Hail Blade or the Ember Knife first, it will work regardless. Now, before you start anything, guys, what you need to do is run towards this area around here and place a box down like so. This is going to stop any invades because the Shaco, one of the biggest cucks to you, is getting invaded. You need that box set up to be able to do this effectively. Now, as for your first box size on blue side, you really want to be placing it where I just did. So there's like a connection point of the lines almost. So it's to the left of the camp. So this is your first box. Your next box, you want to be placing it around here. So there's like a point in this V. This is where you want to be placing your second box. Now, this next one, the big raptor, what's going to happen here is that these two boxes are going to kill all the small raptors. The big one is going to be the only one left and it's going to run towards you as you're doing your red. So your last box, you want to be placing just behind these lily pads here around here. Okay. Now, this one doesn't have to be as specific as these two, just in this general vicinity, but don't put it too close. So as you're getting a leash from your bot lane here, the small raptors are going to die. And this is very important as well. But what you can do when this raptor is now like this on one HP, you run up to it and auto attack it. Now, this will actually fail if you walk up too late. The raptor will reset. So you have to walk up and meet it in line with this tree, I'd say. Anything below that, the raptor will run back like a lunatic and reset and you rage and you leave the game. Now for the rest of this clear, guys, you have a few options. So as we watch me just do a full clear, you can go to Krugs. So you're queuing over the wall, backstabbing the big Krug and hitting this and smiting this and just killing it, putting your boxes down whenever they come off cooldown. And after you do your Krugs, guys, you're going to be level three. So you can actually gank bot lane at this point if it's in a good position to do so. Or you can simply just queue back up towards your wolf camp and full clear towards the top side of the map. So you have a couple of options there. But when you're clearing camps, I cannot stress to you enough how important it is to backstab. Use your passive. If you don't, you're going to take way too much damage. It's going to take so long as well to clear camps. So we have to be efficient, guys. We have to run around the camps. We have to backstab them as much as we can. Now, as for the other side of the map, guys, so same idea, right? We're going to be boxing this area here so no enemy champions can just run in willy-nilly and get a ward down for free. We want to protect ourselves. Now, your first W, your first box. Can you see this here? There's like a green kind of very faint outline over here, this circle. Well, there's actually a line at the top of this circle here, this one right here. This actually connects with another line. That's your first box right here. Now, your next box, guys, there's another faint green circle, and you can see this just here. This is where your next box goes. So if you hover your mouse over this, this is where you're going to place your next box. And again, these two boxes are going to kill all the small raptors. So the big one runs out towards you and your next box, okay? And your last box, guys, you see this diamond kite-shaped rock here? Just place it above it. Beautiful. And when I spawn these, you're going to see that these small raptors are all going to die to the boxes. The big one is going to run into this box. And as you're clearing red buff, when this gets to a kind of like one shot range, you want to be auto attacking it next to this line here. So as I run around, I don't want the raptor camp to reset, auto attack it. After that, you can queue to Krux. You can go to your walls and do blue if you want to. It's completely up to you on what's actually happening on the map. Now, another clear I want to show you guys is the ease clear. So this is something I actually invented really not long ago. And I'm surprised it was original, to be honest. I don't know how people didn't find this out. So same thing again, you're just going to do the simple raptors and red. And after you do the raptors and red guys, you're going to go to wolves. And all you're doing is killing two small wolves here. That's it. You're not killing one. You're killing two of the small ones. That's it. Then you're going to queue over to blue, hit the blast cone and just do your blue. It's the fastest level three in the game with both buffs. All right. Now, the other clear you can do, you guys, if you don't want to start your red buff is, of course, doing blue, then gromp and then just rotating down. OK, so all you're doing is putting two boxes of your blue first up. And then your last box, you just want to put outside of the gromp range. So really anywhere outside this line right here, you see this line, you don't want to be putting it on top of the Gromp camp because it's just going to waste the box, right? And Gromp will reset. So all you're doing, getting a leash on your blue buff, going to Gromp. And as you can see from this clear I do right here, guys, when you hit level two after doing your blue, you're queuing into Gromp and auto attacking it just once and then bringing it into that third box you placed. And then guys, when it actually hits the box, you're putting your next box behind the Gromp. And what this will do when it fears Gromp is push it back into your other box. So it sounds a little bit complicated, but hopefully the visual evidence here and you actually see me doing it will help you guys understand what I'm getting at. Okay, so now you understand the abilities, guys. You understand your clears. Well, what about actually the play style like do you want to go ad shaker do you want to go ap shaker well if you can play both it's great because then you can decide based on your team comp what is going to be better off so if you have four ad champions on your team probably not the best idea to go ad if you've got four ap champions go ad now the advantages guys for ad shaker let me say this it is 10 times easier to carry on ad shaker to 1v9 because in lower elos guys in particular even in higher elos as well getting kills this is the most impactful stat in the game so if you get a kill this can then multiply into 10 kills into 20 kills into 30 kills 
skills real quick. Your dueling potential as well, guys, when you play AD Shaker is better than when you play AP Shaker. So if you run into the enemy jungler, you can indeed 1v1 them. Now, you still can with AP, of course, but with AD, it's just more reliable. Now, what's also good for both playstyles, guys, is itemization. So you don't just have like one mythic you have to go and then a couple more major items that you have to go. You've got some options in there. So if you want to go crack and slow, if you want to go Gale Force, and we'll get into these later in the build section, this is another benefit of just playing Shaker in general. And for AD as well, guys, I think just the fact that not many people know how to play against AD Shaker and to really nullify his threat is a big advantage as well. Now, what are the disadvantages of AD Shaker, guys? Well, one of the disadvantages, right, is that you need gold. You are an assassin and assassins need gold. So you need kills. If you don't get a kill, guys, on the first five, 10 minutes, the game is going to be very slow. You're not going to have the items to even clear effectively and it's going to be very drawn out and it's actually going to be impossible for you to one-shot the enemy squishies. So you need gold. You need to have an impact in that early game. So the pressure is on. Another disadvantage, guys, is that it is very one-dimensional and against good players in particular when you're in higher elos, they will know what you're up to. They can smell you. So sometimes you might be thinking, oh my god, look, a lonely AD carry. I'm just going to go in and nuke them. But actually, they have the support just around the corner and they're actually baiting you to go in so they can just kill you. Red sweepers as well will be used by higher elo players in succession. So if you're looking to go in in a team fight, you really can't because they have red sweepers going for like a minute. And another disadvantage, guys, of AD Shaco is the ability haste, the cooldown, because your build offers way less cooldown than the AP build. So when you go in, sometimes you are just going to be trading one for one. And because you don't have that much ability haste, you're queuing in, of course, but you can't queue out. So it's very, very important to time your ultimate correctly, to put that box down, to block that skill shot. Again, there's a lot more pressure on you actually playing perfectly. Now for AP Shaco, guys, that's the first advantage I want to tell you guys about is that you don't have to be farmed to be effective, which is great, right? It's like being a tank almost. You can be 0-5, but you're still going to have an impact on that game because your boxes, they're going to do damage and your ultimate, of course, as well. When your clone blows up, it can actually change team fights and win team fights on its own. Now, as I just said, guys, for AD Shaco, it's very one dimensional, right? You're just running in and your aim is to blow up the enemy squishes. Well, with AP Shaco, you have so many ways of going about playing team fights, which is great, right? You've got that versatility in there. Whether it's baiting the enemy engager to run into a row of boxes so your AD carry can just auto attack them to death, whether it's diving onto the enemy backline with your clone and trying to outplay them. You might be running into a team fight and just baiting cooldowns on yourself with your box, with your clone, with your Zonya's Hourglass once you get that as well. There are multiple ways of winning team fights and games. With AP as well, guys, another great advantage is the ability haste that I just mentioned was a disadvantage for AD Shaco. So even if you misplay, there is room for error. There's a bit of leniency here. So if you go in and you do get caught, you can just press Zonya's. You can press your ultimate. And then once you come out of that stasis, once you come out of your ultimate, you will have the cooldowns again to get out of that situation. With AD though, you are locked in there. There's no getting out. Now, in terms of disadvantages, guys, for playing AP Shaker, well, first of all, it's harder to play. So it's going to take more time and it's more of like a thinking man's game rather than just running in and blowing people up. And the last disadvantage, guys, for AP Shaker is that yes, you don't have the carry potential that AD Shaco has. Yes, you might still be able to one-shot the enemy AD carry, but again, our play style, guys, for AP is based on ability haste, not necessarily damage. Of course, you still want damage and AP in there and magic penetration, perhaps, but you're more about ability haste and being a nuisance and playing around your cooldowns, getting multiple E's off and Dark Harvest procs than actually just single target damage. Now, in terms of skill order, guys, here, let's just talk about this quickly. For AD Shaker, you're putting a point in your box at level one, of course. Then you're putting a point in your Q. Again, this is for your clear. This is the same as AP Shaker as well. Level three, you can put a point in your box if you want a full clear, or you can put a point in your E. Doesn't really matter that much, but if you do put an extra point in your box, you're going to clear your cams quicker. Level four, of course, you take your E if you haven't already, or you put a second point in your box. So by level three or level four, guys, you have two points in your W. Now, from that point on, guys, you are maxing your E, okay? And then you're going to max your Q. This is for AD Shaco. Then your W last, and obviously you're putting a point in your ultimate at level six, level 11, and level 16. Now for AP Shaco, same as the first four levels of AD. Two in your box if you want a full clear, and then at level four, you're putting a point in that E. Now after that, guys, what I'd love to do is putting five points in my boss because I really care about clearing camps, and with Dark Harvest as well in your runes, which we're about to get into, you will have the damage for your E to execute those enemy champions. Then after that, you're maxing your E, and then your Q last. Now you can put maybe a couple of points in your Q because the invisibility, guys, having an extra second invisibility, it might not sound that impactful, but it actually really is, and getting in a position to box is often more important than the actual stats of that box and the damage it's going to do. So if you can get behind the enemy backline by having an extra point in your stealth, this could actually be really, really effective. So it's honestly up to you guys there, but having three points in your queue is enough. Then you're going to max E. Now we're into the build section guides for this video. And if you're enjoying these guides and you want to see more guides like these, please leave a like to let us know. And the builds, yeah, it's okay. So with AD Shaco, you're going to start with an Ember Knife. Now your Ember Knife, guys, I remember AD Shaco, you are about single target damage. And Ember Knife is going to enhance your own damage against that single target and also negate some of that damage the enemy champion is throwing at you as well. It's like an exhaust 
Force and an Ignite in one. Now for your actual mythic item guys, if you want to go for one shot Jaco, you can either opt for Prowler's Claw for the Lethality and the Active of course, great for your single target damage. You can go for Kraken Slay, which is going to destroy those tanky opponents. You can go for Gale Force, which I personally love because of the active as well. You can combine this with your Q and completely catch the enemy champions off guard. So those are your one shot mythics, but you can also go for Stride Breaker guys, and the reason Stride Breaker is great, well I'm sure you all know it, is because of the active. Okay, it becomes very, very useful when you're chasing enemy champions down. It gives you that extra slow and the movement speed of course, but also the stats. It gives you the tankiness, decent amount of ability haste, and attack damage as well. So it's really down to personal preference here guys for what mythic you go for. For me, I love Gale Force, but it's completely up to you. Now after that guys, you have a few options here. You can go for Essence Reaver, which is actually a great item for Shaker. It's cheap, it gives you AD, Ability Haze, Crit, and of course the Sheen Passive, which is really easy to proc. You can go for the Collector if the enemy champion doesn't have any armor because of the Lethality again. This is going to maximize that one shot potential. You can also decide to go Lord Dominus Regards, guys, which is going to help because of the armor penetration. And most champions, guys, anyway, are going to have some sort of innate armor in their kit, even if it's from their runes. And once they start building Ninja Tabis and even other armor items, even Zonyas, it's going to be harder to actually one shot them, even if you have Prowler's Core on the Collector. So Lord Dominus comes in clutch to one shot those enemy champions building armor. Now, after all those items, guys, if you make it to the late game, you can choose between Infinity Edge, Novori Quick Blades if you wanted to. And obviously, Infinity Edge is great for your backstabs and your damage output, but Novori Quick Blades, I actually think it's really good for the ability haste. And ability haste on AD Shaco, guys, is kind of lacking these days because of how Riot changed Trinity Force, so it kind of makes up for it. Now, of course, if you want to go full Lethality Shaco, you could still build Umbral Glaive, you could still build Serpent's Fang, Edge of Night, Ghost Blade. But as I said, most of the time, guys, teams, enemy champions are going to have some sort of armor. So as the game scales, lethality just becomes less worse. So the build I recommended with your mythic of choice, then the collector, then Lord Dominus Regards, Infinity Edge, Novori Quick Blades, one of them. This is going to be the most effective. Now, in terms of AP Shaco, guys, here we go. So you're going to start with Hail Blade, and then your first item, guys, your first buy in a game is going to be your boots. So you have two options here. You can go with Lucidity Boots for the cooldown, or you can go with Sorcerer Shoes. Now, I prefer Sorcerer Shoes because I love the damage. You actually really notice it, especially when you're eating enemy champions and trying to execute them. But Lucidity Boots, again, Ability Haze is the most important sat on AP Shaco, so that's really useful as well. So again, just comes down to you, what you actually prefer. Now, what we need to think about, guys, after your boots is your Mythic of Choice here. Now, you can go with Leandri's Anguish if you want to, and not only is this great generally because of the burn damage, but also because the Ability Haze passive, and again, Ability Haze, is that stat that we care about. There's two certainties in life, right? There's Death and Taxes, well, there's actually three. Ability Haze on AP Shaco is the third one. Now, you guys can also offer Everfrost here, and Everfrost is really great if you're against a lot of melee champions or a heavy dive composition. Now, for me personally, I have enough experience on Shaco to go Leandre's every game and feel comfortable with it, but if you are new to Shaco, Everfrost is going to give you that peel that you might need, but as AP Shaco, you have enough peel anywhere with your ultimate, with your Zonyas, so I don't really think you need Everfrost, but it's still viable. Now, after your Leandre's Anguish, guys, you have a few options here, and this is what's great about AP Shaco again, and Shaco generally. You can go with Cosmic Drive, and again, I'd only recommend this if you're really experienced on them, and the reason for this is because of the Cosmic Drive ability haze, and it's passive, of course, so you're going to get so much of it, you're going to be queuing and E and boxing and ulting multiple times in those extended team fights. But I would recommend Zonya's Hourglass or even Banshee's Veil before Cosmic Drive, and I'd build Cosmic Drive next. Now, the reason Zonya's Hourglass and Banshee's are so effective, especially Zonya's, is of course because of the active. Now, it's still giving you ability haste, a little bit of AP as well, and some armor, but the active again, AP Shoko, guys, you really want to be baiting cooldowns onto yourself and drawing the enemy champion's attention onto you rather than your teammates. And what's great as well, when you come out of the stasis, you have your Q up again, you have your two ship poison up again, it buys you that valuable time for your cooldowns to reset. So after you have your boots, guys, your mythic, you've got your Zonyus, you've got your cosmic drive, you've got your Banshee spell as well in there. You can go for pretty much anything. You can offer voice stuff if you wanted to, if you wanted some magic penetration in there to actually do more damage. You can go for Morellos, and I'd also recommend this if you're against a heavy healing team. You can go for Death Cap if you want the most AP possible, and I'd recommend doing this against teams that aren't building that much magic resist. But whatever you go with as your last item, guys, you have easily enough in your kit already at that point to be useful, to be effective. Just build whatever you you need depending on the enemy team comp and what they're actually building. Now for the runes guys, we're going to smash through these right here. I know this is an in-depth guide, so here we go. So for 80 Shaco, you're going to take Halo Blades. For the auto attack speed, you're going to get more crits off, more damage off. It's going to blow up those enemy champions. Sudden Impact next, because you're blinking all over the place, it's going to give you more burst damage. Eyeball Collection, because it's just easier to stack when you're playing Assassin Shaco. Relentless Hunter, so you have the movement speed to get around the map quicker to assassinate enemy carries. It's like a mini Mobies. Then for your secondary tree guys, take Precision with Alacrity and Coup de Gras. Again, amplifying that assassination damage. Then for your minor runes, attack speed, adaptive force, and armor or magic resist, depending on the enemy team comp. Then for AP Shaco guys, you're taking Dark Harvest and your boxes and your ultimate. Pretty much everything in your kit will proc Dark Harvest as well. Now, I personally prefer a cheap shot 
here again because enemy champions you're going to be dealing damage to especially in team fights are probably going to have some form of cc on them and when you're box fear someone your e is going to do more damage as well so i love it then eyeball collection again just easier to stack in my opinion and ultimate hunter here because ultimate hunter guys is going to give you cooldown on your ultimate when you get takedowns and this is so so useful when you're trying to do baron or dragon because you need your ultimate to do these objectives guys then for your secondary tree i prefer sorcery and then taking transcendence again ability haze gathering storm because ap shaker guys is a really good scaler so mid late game you're really really strong that's going to empower that stage of the game and then in your minor it's exactly the same attack speed for your early game clear adaptive force and armor or magic resist depending on the enemy team comp now to finish the video guys this final chapter is going to be the skin list for shaker so the best skins you guys have to use and this is actually important for shaker because your q when you q guys you leave behind a puff of smoke this puff of smoke on every skin but two of them is orange it's like a bright orange color and it's so easy for enemy champions to detect so when you're playing arcana shaker which is the newest skin it's like a gray black color it's very hard to see and this is the same with mars shaker as well so just for this reason guys arcanus and mars shaker are the two best skins because it's harder to see your q smoke now after that it's really personal preference to be honest and for me you know i'm pretty lanky irl and you know how they say opposites attract well i actually prefer going for the more chode like skins you know with shaker being a bit shorter and stockier so for me wild card shaker comes in next and this is one of the cheapest skins as well by the way then followed by workshop shaker because it is one of the most unique skins in the game and i love it and this is also on par with nutcracker and asylum shaker both of those skins i love as well and last up guys we have mad hatter shaker and royal shaker again both these skins i like but the worst skin for shaker and the one i hate the most is dark star shaker i cannot stand it. i don't even understand the theme with this one it just looks so whack to me but in terms of winning an actual getting the most carry potential you can over the skin my shaker and arcana shaker guys it has to be and i'd love to know what you guys think of the skins as well so tell me in the comments your favorite skin for shaker but that was the ultimate shaker guy guys hopefully you guys learned a lot from this video and took something away from it again remember to check out the game Week website before you close your browser because it is the nut site the league content it is unmatched we're uploading close to 20 videos a week now guys on the website for our subscribers so join the club get signed up links down below and until tomorrow's upload this has been the jizz bye